and welcome to Handscreen, the show brought to you by 11FS Pulse, a platform with over 5,000 journeys from banks and fintechs from all over the world. Uh, today, I'm joined by Ali McManus. How are you doing today? I'm very good. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Um, delighted to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, as always. As always. Thank you. Um, well, um, we're going to be talking about the annual report, the Pulse annual report, where we have predictions for the year ahead. We also will be handpicking some Pulse stars. Um, and we're talking about great brands and products throughout the year. So we're going to um, start by calling out one of our favorite Pulse stars, and that was in the savings and investments category. Um, and that's Chip, um, a real Pulse favorite. Um, what are your thoughts on Chip? Chip have been fantastic for years now. I mean, they've been a real market leader in the way that they've given access to early investors. But initially, like just getting people who were struggling with saving and on board. Yeah. They've really grown that into just becoming a market leading product. Both of their offerings and the delivery of a lot of the features that they've had. Um, yeah. Everything about it is perfectly seamless um, through from the onboarding right the way through to, to yeah. a lot of the journeys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we spoke about them before, actually, and they, they do a great job of, of gamifying that savings experience. Yeah. Um, and uh, really encouraging people to, to actually have fun with it, uh, get used to it, uh, and also just make it so simple for them. Um, and, and we really like that. We also like how quickly they deliver their market-leading savings rates. Um, I think they're at just over 3% now. And as soon as there's a Bank of England uh, announcement, they'll pounce on that, send the email out, rest assured, shit, I've got my back. Uh, so when it comes to savings rates, when it comes to UX, uh, great onboarding, um, Chip are always there. Uh, and also I'd like to thank them personally for uh, featuring the 11FS report. Um, the Pulse report is right at the top of their home tab. Uh, so that's, we, we like that. Um, and thank you. So we're now going to talk about one of our key categories, which is the um, the sort of digital wallets, current account space. Yes. We gave it to Monzo. Um, it's hard not to. It's very hard not to. And uh, it, it's almost boring doing so, but we can't not do it yeah. uh, because they really have gone from strength to strength from their UX. Uh, it continues to be at the forefront of their product. Um, and onboarding is still incredible. Uh, POTS is still as seamless as ever. The way that they communicate and deliver new features is great. Uh, payments are easier. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of those where um, it's, it's hard to fault them. And are they still the, the sort of benchmark? Yeah, I think it's, it's actually impossible to say otherwise. Yeah. Um, they've continued, they've not been complacent at all. They've continued to improve upon those features and those, yeah. those um, really sort of like foundational things that made them so popular to begin with. Um, a lot of the others have followed as well uh, in behind, but they have always been at the forefront of that innovation and making sure that the customer has always seen that those sort of the way people think about money and the mental models have, have always been replicated through their products. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that isn't to say that there isn't more to come from them. I think it would be good to see, for example, international transfers. Yes. Uh, maybe a more competitive savings rates. Uh, but um, as a user, uh, it's very hard to, to follow them on, on the features that they do deliver. Yeah. It really is. I mean, I personally have been a customer network as long as I can remember. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, the runner-up in this category, ZA Bank? Yeah, we we gave um, a real spotlight pick to to ZA Bank um, of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, and I think because they in their market they've had a real bit of differentiation in the way that they tell their story, the way that they offer really simple good UX copy, mm -hmm. um, their onboarding, their transfers um, are really, really great. But they've also got an awful lot of personality. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've written before and produced content at 11FS around how a lot of fintechs are starting to look the same. Mm -hmm. They're starting to copy. Yes. And there's a real sense that they've gone, nah, we're going to go our own way, we're going to do this. They've got some really brilliantly designed hero moments. They've got some, some would say, unique interaction patterns. Sure. Um, for cultural differences between the different regions. I'm not sure if they're um, entirely intuitive. Mm -hmm. To me, they seem at times slightly um, unintuitive, but I may be wrong. So well, it's one of those was really interesting. It's, it scored very highly, uh, four above, um, sort of across the board yeah. in Pulse. So we couldn't ignore them. And we we're looking at it. They got great card management. Um, and I think what we're going to do is actually have a quick look at their, I think it's their payments journey. Yeah. Um, so let's just dive in and Let's just have a look. I think what they do quite well is is take some of the the best elements of, of digital wallets. Yeah, and I think one of the things that wallets has done better than payments and transfers when it comes to that is 
Traditional banking, even in the fintech scene, has had a hard time moving away from that idea of the mental models of how people receive and give money. Mm -hmm. We saw there in the first part of the journey, the first thing is, is it's not a transfer you're making, it's I'm giving money to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And just that little change in framing can make the big difference in making it so much easier to comprehend. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell it's probably aimed at a younger audience. Um, yeah. Uh, to which I believe they definitely captured because I think this is the most popular challenger bank in Hong Kong. So although we may not have heard of them here so much, um, it's making a lot of noise out there and I think for good reason. I mentioned those hero moments earlier. We saw a little animation of money being transferred through a wallet mm -hmm. up into a, um, the recipient's bit there. Just little things like that can just add so much like extra polish and personality to, yeah. to a little bit of delight. That's it. Isn't yeah. That? yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, great. Well, that's the um, current accounts and digital wallets. So now we're going to talk about another category in the Pulse Stars section, which is personal financial management. Um, our Pulse Star went to Snoop, another Pulse favorite. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think Snoop, um, while having been fantastic at what they do, finding better offers, better deals, making sure that you are getting the most out of your money for years. Mm -hmm. I've had, I mean, the the climate condition, the climate conditions this year mm -hmm. have been perfect for them, mm -hmm. and they have really committed to their their main purpose, which is helping people save money anyway, in which way they can. Yeah, through offers, services, and the um, everything else. And yeah, I I think they'll have made a real big impact mm -hmm. um, on people's lives this year. Yeah, um, due to you know obviously the cost of living crisis, the energy crisis. Um, and yeah, they, they deserve um, all the acclaim they get for the work they've done, especially yeah. in times of need. Absolutely. Another brand with a lot of personality. Um, and also, um, it's it's one that not only points out where you may be overspending, uh, but as you say, it's it's one that says you could actually save a lot by, by switching suppliers here. Yeah. So it's one that doesn't just offer oversight, but also next steps. Yeah. And I think this is key in the, the PFM space um, because a lot of these apps are great at, at kind of giving you an insight, which is very important, can't emphasize that enough, but um, Snoop go that that extra step, yeah, um, which, is, which is really, really good. And I think I, I managed to save on um, switching internet providers. Yeah. Uh, and it also told me, basically, you're spending a lot on Uber Eats. Uh, so that's that two wins you out do. of that. You really do. It's a, it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but Snoop is, is helping me fix that, or at least highlights it. Yeah. We gave a shout out to Another as well, one that was um, even more slightly proactive in the, the advice that it was giving. Yes, so this is uh, Dave, uh, another real favorite. Um, and it's a, it's another, um, it actually does a lot of different things um, and it, it can it can almost act as a, as a um, kind of challenger bank as well. Yeah. But it's it's um, in its own right, a great PFM tool. And um, it will give you insights into your spending um, and tell you how, could, how you could make better budgets and these kind of things. But what it, it it does as well is it can say we do um have you thought about a side hustle so again in a similar vein mm. to snoop slightly differently of course but it says uh why don't you get some uh this this job of you know what are your interests mm. uh okay you, you like um walking dogs or uh you'll, you'd love to do interviews or the, all these kind of things mm. and you can say okay this fits my profile it's a, it fits into the gig economy uh actually you can you can um there's a lot of jobs on that side hustle feature uh, and it offers a solution as opposed to just a lens into yeah. your problems. Yeah. It gives a an idea of what's out there beyond the realm of what some of the knowledge might be in the first instance, which is... Absolutely. And that, that solution-driven product um, is something that we, we really like to see. Um, they do a really good job of, of sort of tempering that as well in that they they don't offer it as a you have to monetize your interests or mm -hmm. anything like that it's it's only on a conditional basis in which they feel as if they would be beneficial which i think yeah. is another great customer insight trait absolutely they're not they're not pushing it uh it's just there uh, yeah and and it's it's right where it should be oh dear you know this has been a tough month month for my budgets um all oh right right here just one tap away it's a solution to that yeah um so credit to, to those two winners now we're going to talk about business banking. Um, very popular category in Pulse. Um, we get a lot of video consumption in this area. Um, a lot of interesting brands out there. Um, our winner, um, again, no real surprises, went to Starling Bank. Yeah. Um, can you tell us why? They've just got 
they've they've really harnessed their um, real knowledge of that that business banking market in order to create something that is almost it's almost like a one size fits all tool uh, from a business banking perspective. In that whether you're a small SME or whether you're even like a a, a more on the the upper echelons of that scale, they've just got it down in it. It's their operations as much as their products as well. The um, 24-7 like mm. ongoing support, for right. example, is uh, for a product um, for small businesses is just invaluable. It's something the banks have failed at historically. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that 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 support thing is very important. Um, Starling nailed the the UX and feature delivery yeah. for, for, for uh, SMBs for, for a while now, and they've been a market leader in it, I think. Um, but it's that 24 hour support that they also offer which says we take this very seriously uh, you know this isn't just a um an app where uh you know you can see cool features and it fits within your your work life no this is something that really really uh is market leading and taken very seriously by this company yeah. um, and i think that's um it's a great combination and yeah. and uh it means that you can you trust them well that's it from a brand and optics perspective as well it's like that's a, a bank that is working for your business, would be available for you. And that's pretty invaluable, um, to be honest. Absolutely. And that their insights are great as well. A yeah. uh, lot to be learned from their personal account, which is also very good, also very highly rated. Uh, a serious competitor to Monzo for good reason. Um, it's still storage Monzo. Personally. It's still Monzo. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and then we have it for business banking. So now we're going to talk about um, the pulse pick of the week and the pulse pick of the week as you know is um we shout out our favorite journey yeah. uh, every week on pulse and we we push it out there and we give a description as to why and we'll rate it out by stars um what's been your top pick of the week from the year 2022 uh, i think one that really stands out to me um as a as a product in general but i think their onboarding flow in particular mm -hmm. got real attention on pulse pick of the week um australian fintech up Yes. Um, they do everything fantastically well, from their brand all the way through to their UX, their copywriting, the way they celebrate those little hero moments. We think they've got the balance in their product absolutely perfectly correct. Yeah. Um, their onboarding flow in terms of setting contextual information, making people understand exactly what was going to happen, why they needed things. And then also with so much personality that comes with that brand as well. Um, the perfect balance of sort of informality yet seriousness. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of a masterclass in sounds really geeky, but it's a masterclass in forms. Yeah, sure. And that's you know that's fair enough uh, from a UX perspective for sure. And mm -hmm. we're we about that. We're fine with that. And and um, I think they've been very good at, at, at marketing their brilliant product as well. Yeah, uh, so they've both gone hand in hand, and and uh, yeah, we've been excited to watch them along that journey for sure. Um, if I was to go for one, I would have to go for the um, spaceship uh, payments journey yeah. uh, and their automated rules journey as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this this has been a one that um, I was very excited to see because um, we we know what um, automated payments look like, and that's a great feature, and we encourage all savings and, and um, investment apps to to include that because it's a great way to to normalise that behaviour again to good habits. Mm. Um, but what uh, spaceship do very well is they um, have this um, it's the way of controlling the functions through written word and it really really simplifies it and I'm not sure what the, the way to describe it is um, dictated actions or but it really really simplifies that when it, and it um, it looks great it's original um, and it's very very simple um, so I think it's combining great features with simplicity um, and uh, it's a it's a very with thinking investment platform and I encourage people to to take some inspiration from it and it's um it's really one that, that stood out to us in, in, the, in the Pulse team couldn't agree more yeah um, and when it comes to the rest of the report we've got uh, other top picks we've got other uh, Pulse Star winners we've got other Pulse Star shout outs uh, there's plenty more to be found in this first section we've just taken a small handful from, from some of our favourites um, in the second part of the show we're going to be looking to the year ahead um, what our predictions are, um, looking into the report itself and thinking about some of those predictions and really just um, thinking about what trends we're likely to see uh, and what predictions are to come. Um, and uh, I think to start, 
Uh, we're going to talk about um, private banking and wealth. Um, and should we speak to one of our colleagues about that? Let's go to the front. I think I've got someone in mind. I think so. Okay. Hiya. It's it's Joe and Ali from Home Screen. <laughs> Sorry. I know. <laughs> we did talk about this before. Um, you featured in the report. Uh, thank you for that. We got, we got some great quotes from you. Um, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about private banking and wealth. Um, awesome. You mentioned that there'll be some big innovations on the horizons. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I think we're just hitting a really interesting point in the, the development of fintech more broadly, where obviously, you know, globally now we're seeing uh, really established players in that kind of traditional mainstream retail banking space. Mm. Uh, and the time is just ripe, I think, for that innovation to to move up the, the wealth spectrum. Um, I think people seem to sometimes have the impression that people that have lots of lots of money live in these isolated bubbles where they they don't know what else is going on in the world. But, you know, we, we speak to people with huge amounts of resources and they still use Netflix. They still know what Revolut is like those yeah. those amazing digital experiences have, have had a real impression on them. They're now expecting to see that in their own banking experiences. Nice. So, um, yeah, the, the big wealth transfer means that these people will, will just expect to have great digital products at their hands, um, even if they are very, very wealthy. I think so. I suppose it's, it's a little bit about wealth transfer as in, you know, younger people becoming wealthier who've grown up with those products. But also, you know, you speak to people that are established wealth holders, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, these people still know in the UK, for example, what, what Monzo is, what Starling is, what Revolut is. Um, and so when they're looking at their own rather dilapidated uh, online banking experience with their with their current providers, you know, I think they, they're starting to really, really ask now, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Um, so I think most people in this space know that the time has come for them to really kind of get their houses in order and start to think about what they want to enable in the digital space for those customers. When we look at the, the top echelons of that as well um do we do we look at um like them almost like the expecting of like the digitization of that that almost like white glove service that they've had like over the course of, of maybe decades and years where they've had like an individual helping them with their finances and now we're seeing that moving completely into a digital realm I think there's elements of that experience that yeah it makes total sense to to find digital routes to to deliver that um there's lots of things maybe that people are currently having to do manually through an interaction with a private bank or, or a banking assistant that they would like to be able to self-serve but there are definitely still huge parts of that experience and that relationship that people want to be able to have that human interaction for so it's it's absolutely not a case of saying how do we take everything in the private banking right. space and move it into the digital world but it's how do we work out the things where those customers do want to be able to interact digitally and how do we identify those moments where it still is really really important for our customers and also potentially for us as a, as a bank or a banking provider to have that human to human interaction because yeah these people do expect highly customized highly tailored bespoke services right. and also highly tailored and bespoke decision making when it comes to accessing particular financial products okay so like a, a hybrid model um very well delivered well that's really really great that you could uh, tell us about that and, and thanks for joining us today no worries okay thank, thank you like it great well it's it's always nice to hear from Kay. always um very interesting there um my you know assumption around actually this is all about the the wealth transfer is actually off it's it's actually there's older generations who also want that yeah. digital upgrade. That was very interesting to hear. Um, and also the the hybrid model that that um that that kind of um really solidified I think the 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 thinking that we had around that where where it's people want the perks of um you know you want you want to have the person that you know that you can speak to when things are really you know in trouble or you just want reassurance as a as a customer. Uh, but also I want to quickly send this person 70 pounds and I don't need yeah. to make a phone call uh, and you know, you know, all these things around uh, private banking, which are very, very clunky, and, and um, there's a lot of innovation to be done there. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's probably the, one of the last to get addressed through the necessity. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it it does now. It, it seems like the need for it to catch up is absolutely there because otherwise, if they stand still, our fintechs that have now been on the rise for for best part of a decade, 
are going to find ways to overtake them with the technology and the solutions that they already have absolutely into that space yeah and increasingly the clout that might come with a with a private bank will soon become actually this is just tedious and, yes. and i need it and i think um i think credit swiss and coats have been quite good at seeing that and actually delivering an app yeah. where people can use and there's a long way to go uh but i think that there's been some positive trends there um i think with the the wealth um sector as well and, and um i think that um what we're starting to see more of as well is alternative assets and investment platforms that will allow that yeah um so you know whether it's uh you know you can, you can invest in wine or or um art or watches and these kind of things yeah. and it's interesting that there's that there's definitely space for that amongst the wealthy but that's also being uh delivered to those people who just want to get in like they might be enthusiasts yeah. but it might be uh, an inflation hedge where they want to invest in a watch because uh they're worried about how the market's performing and they've seen these go up or art or other alternative assets which previously they've been blocked from so it's an interesting um combination of, of satisfying both uh demographics there yeah 100 percent. it'll be really interesting to see how that continues to evolve and actually how that um increase in access to otherwise probably quite gay kept mm. investment communities yeah, yeah. um actually spawns new uh, types of assets yeah in order to invest in so um, a really interesting space to watch for sure absolutely and we're starting to see that um we're starting to see dedicated apps for that um masterworks is one for for art uh, but we're also seeing that um integrated into uh, existing investment platforms yeah um chip once again comes up uh, they've, they've got a great feature uh, but it's just becoming more and more relevant. Um, yeah. People are more and more interested in it. And I think it's a combination of both um, people being savvy investors, uh, but also genuine enthusiasm. People might know a lot about wine, uh, but not quite have enough money to afford this bottle that's, you know, 50 years old and, and you know, on this pedestal somewhere, but really know about the market and be interested in that. And they can they can just make factual investments. And, yeah. and, that, and that's great to see both in terms of a uh, investment opportunity but also as a hobbyist, someone might want to get into it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is all about that that ease of access for people that aren't connected within that industry in the first place. Yeah. And that kind of brings us really nicely on to what we might see in crypto mm. in the year ahead. Sure. There's been a lot of talk, more than talk, um, genuine plans for policy and regulation around the crypto space. I think that's going to be a really interesting thing to watch in the next year. Yeah. Well, do you want to elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, I think um, we've done... Um, some previous shows and there's been a lot of content that 11FS put out and the industry wide has put out around the uh, the dangers of the under-regulation of, of cryptocurrencies yeah. um, particularly when it comes to the, the user experience a lot of the techniques they use um, in order to I'm, I'm going to say like over-inflate the, maybe the perceptive value of particular assets right. or, or things and there's been some high-profile cases of companies getting into trouble and the, the necessary consequence of that is regulation. Mm-hmm. Um, the open access and variety of assets to invest in is still a very, very promising and good thing in order to have. It helps democratize investment um, access, but also um, you know, the ability to grow your money that has previously been quite diminished in terms of access. But there do need to be safeguards. Um, do, yeah. And I think safeguards are a good thing. And I think I'd hope to see that the value of certain legitimate cryptocurrencies, we're not talking meme coins or mm-hmm. cold coin or anything like yeah. that, um, those, those assets start to become more stable. Yeah. They start to become genuinely investable assets without the fear of huge spikes and yeah. drops. Yeah. Yeah. I fully agree with that. Um, the, the, the need is now, and, and um, it's, it's one of those ones where uh, with this, I think we always call it in the report the crypto winter. Yes. Uh, a lot of people calling it that, and I think that's fair. It's time to draw back and have a look at where is the utility here, um, and also where where are the problem spaces because this is a good time to regulate. Um, yeah, there's a lot of um, justified anger at the industry, and shit, we better have got this right first time because uh, you know a lot of people lost a lot of money. Um, something we talked about um, in another episode um, is about the emphasis of education and how it's on the platforms to to say you know this is a main coin are you sure this is extremely volatile yeah uh here's the education 
as and when you're buying it rather than in some FAQ somewhere. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's about going beyond that. And actually there needs to be regulatory standards in place that ensure that those those um, yeah. kind of tool tips or whatever it happens to be pop up then or excluded entirely if it's a, if it's purely a pump and dump scheme. Yeah. Maybe just, sorry, we're not featuring this. We don't get how popular it is. I think even the most basic of safeguards that exist in, in traditional financial services aren't there in crypto yeah. and they're, they're obviously being considered and, and being written but the idea that you know when you look at any financial services whether it be from from gaming and gambling through to opening like a stocks and shares isa and levels of sort of seriousness versus entertainment there's always that your investment can go down as well as up there's all of those kind of they're not safeguards but they're certainly warnings yeah right and they have to be in place they have to be told uh, to the customer when they're signing up for any product the crypto as a space just simply was not regulated. There was nothing that fit that bill yeah. in order to even place warnings to protect the customer. So any customer protection is is uh, is welcomed yeah. from my perspective. And uh, I suppose we're hoping and expecting to see uh, more of that in 2023. Absolutely. Prediction that I've got, um, and I'm very welcome to hear some challenges on it, yeah. Absolutely. Um, is about um, Chase UK uh, taking over in the UK. Uh, so I've written about that. I, I, I think they're going to do very well here. Um, yeah. A number of reasons. I think that they've um, they've got a great product. It's it's very simple. They've they've taken some of the best UX from some of the leading fintechs. Yeah. Um, and there's, they've not got a whole lot of features, which maybe makes that a bit easier because they're not shoehorning in a lot of features. It's easy to use. Um, but more than that, it's it's got some great features in the sense that it's 1% cash back on all debit card transactions um huge i can't think of another debit card that does it or at least not a mainstream one um it's got five percent on roundups um seemingly maybe some of the that's a gimmick because there's a limit on that but actually if you've got another savings account and you're combining that with cash back that's a great proposition as well yeah uh it's also got uh as of yesterday i think it's three percent on on savings um they're about to include nutmeg another jp morgan acquisition into the platform um which is in its own right a great investment platform then okay. uh, they're, they're not great with open banking but do they need to be if they've got that investment platform in there okay. um and they are built on the um core banking platform delivered by 10x through their partnership there mm-hmm. which is very agile as far as i'm aware um i think it's cloud-based and it's it's built in the in the way that fintechs deliver features. It's, yes. it's built in that sense. It's not clunky, as far as I'm aware. It's very hard to tell. But the the rate at which they've delivered these features and, and changed the app is, is impressive. How does a fintech um, without those kind of funds or a incumbent with a clunky backend compete with that? I don't know. The incumbent with the clunky backend is really interesting. Yeah. Um, Fintechs probably can't compete. They're going through rounds of raises, trying to get things. The um, sheer level of the gamble and the investment by Chase, it was at 450 million, mm-hmm. something along those lines. But that's an extortionate amount of money. And it's a gamble that they've paid off. Yeah. But it's paid off because they have looked at the market. They've realized how to build those businesses and realized that actually as a separate entity running that within um, the product that can be tied back to legacy tech. Mm-hmm. So they've embraced modern solutions. You mentioned 10x there. They've embraced those modern solutions, that modular approach, that ability to build things fast. They've operated like fintech with the clout of an incumbent. Yeah. yeah. And incumbents need to realize that this should be the start. Pro- um, producing new propositions should be the start of revolutionizing things and they should build the rest of their business and evolve the business around these newer businesses that need to spring up. Right. And yeah. while obviously JP Morgan Chase have an enormous portfolio of companies and products yeah. and everything else, the way they've approached tapping into the UK market mm-hmm. has been fantastic and it's shown the way it can be done. It has. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've got some predictions in the report about uh, incumbents switching to a better core banking model. Yes. Um, and uh, I think that's the only way because otherwise um, Chase will, will take us by storm. And um, they they've done very well so far, and it's I think there was an announcement made about them moving to Germany. Mm-hmm. Presumably they're going to repeat that process. 
um, from what I hear, actually, the 10x model doesn't allow for global expansion in the way that you might think it would, uh, which is may slow that growth slightly. That that remains to be seen. <laughs> um, but for sure, it's it's a um, very very competitive model and and one that um, we'll probably be talking about next year again. Uh, and that they actually won the year before in the, in the Pulse um, report. They they won best incumbent. Uh, because we we're just very impressed with our immediate delivery of these features and, yeah. and the simple nature of it. Um, and I think, you know, it's 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 just very interesting to see what this race is going to look like. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Um, as ever, thank you, Ali. Thank you for joining us. It's been uh, a pleasure. It's been great to chat. Uh, and thank you all for watching. Um, if you'd like to find more insights and more predictions, uh, more pulse stars, uh, please go check out the annual report. That will be in the, the link below. Um, and um, if you'd like to see the platform, um, head over to pulse.nfs.com to check it out. Thank you all. Thank you.